It is my pleasure to introduce our two guests for today, writing associates in the Sheridan Center for Teaching and Learning. Chanel Riley, uh, who is also a PhD candidate in the Molecular Cell Biology Program, and uh, Megan Gonzalez, who is a PhD candidate in the Neuroscience Program. So Chanel and Meg, please take it away. Wonderful, thanks so much, Jason. Um, I will now share our slides. Thank you, Meg. So we are very excited to be here with all of you today uh, to talk to run this workshop and talk about writing um, in science and the writing center and you know how this can be a, a useful tool for you to accomplish all of your goals. Um, so do you want to go to the next slide, Meg? Yeah. Awesome. Um, so we have a couple of goals that we've outlined for today. Uh, so we want to help uh, every you know everyone and ourselves continue to understand the process of writing a manuscript. Um, the different components that, that go into writing a manuscript, the reviewing and the editing procedures, uh, both internal reviewing and editing, as well as external peer reviewing and, and editing process. Um, so as um, written right there on the slide, and I know it's a part of the poll, no prior publishing experience is required. Um, this is something that, you know, we're all in a journey in a journey on and um, you know you're gonna you're gonna get there if you haven't published and if you have then you've gotten your feet wet and it's just something that is a learning process as you go through and through um, and this is a judgment free zone so don't be afraid to ask us and ask us any questions um, after the presentation we have a Q&A session set up a discussion session which sounds like is the typical platform um, of this meeting and um, as uh, as previously stated, feel free to put in the chat any questions that you have um, or direct message uh, Jason if you if you don't feel comfortable doing that. Um, so with that, I'm going to introduce myself. So I am Chanel Riley. I am a rising fourth year now PhD candidate in molecular biology, cell biology, and biochemistry, uh, the graduate program. Uh, my lab is actually in the MMI department. Um, so it's a little cross disciplinary there. Um, I've been a writing center associate since August 2018 when I matriculated at Brown. And prior to that, um, I went to undergrad at WPI, um, Worcester Polytechnic Institute, where I got a uh, bachelor's in science in biology and biotechnology with a minor in writing and rhetoric. And at WPI, I was also a writing center associate for uh, my junior and senior years. Uh, so October 2016 to May 2018. So um, I am now entering my sixth year in a writing center, which is uh, wild to think about, um, but very, very exciting. And I've previously published in the Journal of Immunology. Awesome. Thanks, Chanel. Um, yeah, so hi, everyone. I'm Meg. Um, I'm a rising third year PhD candidate in neuroscience. Um, I have not been a writing associate as long as Chanel, but I have been one since January 2020. So right before the, the pandemic kind of started. Um, I have my um, bachelor's in science um, in cognitive neuroscience from Brown and also my master's in behavioral and social health sciences from Brown. And I've published um, in a couple of journals, um, most recently the Annals of the New York Academy of Sciences and the British Journal of Clinical Psychology. Um, so my, my research focuses more on um, human neuroimaging and clinical populations. So very excited to talk about that to later answer any questions related to that. Um, but yeah, so in terms of today's objectives, um, first, we're going to talk about writing and science and Chanel's going to talk about this, you know, what does it look like, what, it, what does it entail. Then we're going to talk about the anatomy of a manuscript um, and I'll be talking about the essential components and what you really want to think about when you're preparing the manuscript. Then um, Chanel is going to talk about how to um, submit and publish, which um, is another really big part of this whole process. And then uh, she's also going to go over the review process. Oops, sorry. And then uh, we're also going to talk about the writing center and how you can come to us with any questions that you have at any phase in the writing process. I know personally I've helped people with editing and responding to reviewers for peer reviewed manuscripts and also just getting started, fleshing out ideas, all of that. So with that, um, I will have Chanel take it away. Yes, so um, writing in science sounds like um, almost an oxymoron to a lot of people is, you know, we take our writing classes as humanities classes and we take our science classes and there's not always a lot of cross communication between the disciplines, um, but that is not really the best, the best way to look at it, right? So 
Um, there is an art to writing and science. There's an art to crafting a story um, through your publication that you know grasps the reader's attention. Um, but also, writing and science can be very daunting because you know we tend to think about um, our scientific work in experiments, and you know I'm going to do this, which logically leads to this, and logically leads to this, and then turning that into writing can be a daunting task. Um, but what I think um, is really interesting to start to bridge these two together is, you know, writers in general um, talk about this phenomenon where, where people tend to look at, at uh, really successful and published writers and think that um, they sit down with this entire story all written out, all fleshed out, you know, start to finish, your rise, your fall, the climax, etc. Um, but that's, that's often not the case. Um, often, um, often writers start with with just a first draft that ends up looking nothing like their final draft. Um, and something that that I want to point out as well while we're on the slide is that writing is uh, an iterative process. So you you start writing and then you know we tend to think of this term final draft, but that's that's not necessarily true. We, we get to a stopping point, yes, but you can always pick up a piece of writing and then continue the story. Um, and so that's something that I like to point out here as well. So um, I'm sure everyone's had time to read um, this quote, and if not, you, you, you definitely can after. But um, basically, the, the gist is that, you know, everyone starts with an ugly first draft and it is OK. You just have to start with something on paper. Um, and so here is Tim Requarth, who is a freelance science journalist. Um, and, and he writes, imagine walking into the operating room and saying, I've given this a lot of thought and I would like to do surgery now. <laughs> um, and doctors would, would say, um, no, you have had no training. Um, and so, so here he's equating that to an editor, um, where an editor is going to have a similar reaction. How do I know this person can write? Um, and so, so this is just to again highlight um, the fact that you you want to start somewhere so that you can then look back on your draft, improve that writing process, um, and uh, and then you know get to that point where you're going to eventually submit for peer review. Um, so here is a book that I really like to uh, recommend to science writers um, and even manuscript writers, um, The Craft of Science Writing. This book goes through uh, writing about science, um, how, how to read like a writer, how to read your science work like a writer, um, but then how, how to pitch that story um, you know, with a climax, believe it or not. Um, and, and as well, there, he, um, the author here also includes many science writers and their journeys and their explanation of writing and science and, and how they've come to learn to do this. So this is a pretty short book. It's a small book and I have it at my at my bench at all times. Um, and it's a really, really great resource. So I highly recommend it as you as you begin writing in science. Awesome. Thanks, Chanel. And now I will go on to the next part about the anatomy of a manuscript. So I'm sure we're all pretty much familiar with the basic components of, you know, a scientific um, publication being an introduction, method section, results, and then discussion slash conclusion. So we're going to dive a little bit more into that. So the first step that I always take whenever writing a manuscript or speaking with my PIs or whoever else I'm writing with is to determine what paper type of paper we're writing because there's so many different kinds. So as you can see here that I have listed out, we have the original empirical research, which is what most people think of when they think of scientific writing. So a randomized control trial, you know, you have a hypothesis, you have a large cohort of people. So that's often published. Um, case studies are smaller, a small handful of people or even one person. Um, systematic reviews and meta-analyses are also really common and they're really helpful to the whatever field you're working on because they can summarize um, a lot of information that's already been published in a really concise way. Um, and they also get cited a lot, which is really helpful for you. Um, there's always commentaries, opinions, and perspectives. So you don't have data per se. You're not looking really at putting all these articles together. Instead, you wanna give your opinion. And then there's also methods and techniques articles. So one of the, the other primary things I always think about is, you know, how you structure and, you know, write your um, paper it depends on your target journal. So, you know, there's a bunch of different journals in the world. There's, there's thousands. Uh, I'm pretty sure, but um, you know, and every journal has its own requirements and its own um, way of doing things or structuring word count, things like that. So this is something you really wanna take into 
consideration when targeting what you're doing because journals have different impact factors and I'm happy to explain more about that later if anyone is confused about what impact factor is. But um, it's really great to have this conversation up front with your PI and other and your co-authors because this will definitely shape how you write your paper. And then choosing your target journal. Um, so basically, what so what you'll need to do is first, of course, ask your PI. Um, they're happy to talk about this kind of thing. Um, you have to think about the novelty of your paper. Is this a groundbreaking nature paper no one's ever done before? Or is this something that adds significance to your field, however small or big? So you really need to think of that. Um, so I've published a neuroimage, and this is what the neuroimage guide for authors page looks like. So basically, what you need to do is once you think about all of these questions, so the strength of your results, um, how important in your field will it be that your article type, like we spoke about, and again, impact factor. Once you select your journal, you can go to the guide for authors and then look at all the specific writing instructions. And they're free and you just can click the download PDF and they'll pop right up. Um, so this has all of that kind of nitty gritty. And then, of course, the flow of a scientific paper. So I always like to think of the flow like in the shape of an hourglass. And I really like this picture because I feel like it gets this idea across very well. So we like to start off really general when we're beginning a scientific article. We like to ask questions about why things are happening or talk about like I talk about depression a lot, you know, how many millions of people struggle with depression. And then what you're going to do is as you get more specific, you're going to um, go in more and it's going to talk specifically about your hypothesis, your procedures, your methods, things like that. So we're going to go from general to specific and then back out to general when we're talking about whatever we found. So how does this, how do your findings in the discussion relate to other parts of the field or other, you know, things to discuss um, that's relevant to science. So that's really important. And then uh, Chanel is going to take over with how to publish and submit. Um, so I really like this graphic where it says, are you sure the study is legit? Sure. It says it was accepted for publication. Where? Hmm. The National Academy of Proceedings. Um, so this, this especially seemed really relevant during the pandemic where, um, you know, a lot of information was getting out to the general public very quickly um, and in many different ways and in reactions of people were definitely impacting that as well. Um, and so obviously we're all, our, all our common goal is to um, create uh, research that is exactly what Meg said, adding to our field or as a novel finding um, and, and has that impact factor is peer reviewed um, and accepted as, as what we think it is um, in, in, the, in the field. So um, Meg, if you go to the next slide, please. So um, PLOS is just one of these many, many journals that Meg was talking about. Um, and here they have a really good graphic on their website where they talk about checking the status of your manuscript. Um, so when you first write your, your first draft with your PI um, of your journal, you're going to, you know, there's going to come a day where your PI says, all right, let's submit. Um, you, it's very exciting. You get to submit the manuscript to the journal. Essentially, you submit your manuscript. They say we've got all the pieces we need and um, it will move into uh, more screening um, and, and review process. Um, so then your, your journal will get a specific editor who gets assigned to, I'm sorry, your paper will get a specific editor who's assigned to it that works for the journal. Um, and then the um, that editor will send it out to a couple of reviewers who will then review it. Usually uh, it's two or three reviewers who will look at your um, your paper. Um, you see online that it's under review at that point. Um, and then you'll get that paper back with reviewer comments. Um, and there's there's a couple different things that can happen. You can get your paper can get rejected right away. Um, it can get uh, conditionally accepted um, where you need to perform some amount of experiments um, or or provide some sort of explanation for certain things that the editors um, and reviewers, the editor and reviewers have pointed out. Um, or it can get accepted right off the bat as is. Typically, the middle um, option is what will happen. And so then you'll perform those experiments, address those reviewer concerns and comments, um, and then resub you know, resubmit that paper. Um, and hopefully at that point, then it will become fully accepted. 
Um, so these slides I'll go through pretty quickly. Um, it's essentially every step of that process I just described. So your paper, when you first submit it, will have initial checks. Uh, the journal staff will basically uh, perform a QC quality control check um, to, to make sure that you have clearly stated any competing interests um, that you ha are compliant with their that specific journals policies um, and ethical standards that you disclose any financial conflicts of interest um, and that your data is available and um, written is able to be repeated by others. Once it passes this QC step, uh, the next step is editorial review. Um, so this is where uh, your paper will then get assigned a specific editor um, who works with the journal. Um, and this editor will review the manuscript him or herself um, and determine whether reviews from additional experts are needed. So uh, this editor may decide to accept your paper right off the bat. Um, generally, that's not the case. Generally, your editor will then select two or will reach out to two or three reviewers um, to peer review your, your journal, your paper, I mean. Um, then the peer review process starts. Um, so those two or three peer reviewers will read through your manuscript. Uh, they'll make comments, um, raise questions or concerns on maybe big general conclusions that you make, or maybe um, ask for more detail on a specific experiment, um, or even um, ask for follow-up experiments, depending on, on what, what it is that they um, point out as potential concerns or, or points of interest in your manuscript. Um, you get this peer review, um, this peer review comments back from those reviewers and the editor. Um, then it's up to you to address those comments and concerns submit it back to the journal to get the final editorial decisions. Um, and so as I said before, uh, typically there's there's three categories and you can split that middle one up into two. Um, so you will your paper will either get fully rejected or fully accepted, which are the least common um, things that happen. Uh, it could require major revision or it could require minor revision. Typically minor revision is going to, going to be line edits or generalizations that reviewers are concerned that you have made that they want you to rewrite, whereas major revisions will, will tend to be a full experiment that they ask you to do in addition to the work that you've already done. Um, and then finally, you, you'll make those revisions um, and then you'll, you'll get to resubmit uh, your, your paper and hopefully they will accept it at that point. So basically, this is a really nice recap of everything that Chanel just said, and um, it's very clear and it really shows, you know, how it's how this is done from start to finish with submission to acceptance or rejection. Ultimately, you'll get that acceptance, whether it be at a different journal or this journal. Um, it just takes time and um, effort more than anything. Um, but in terms of the review process, in terms of what you have to do, um, I really like this graphic. Um, I have used it before in various writing center workshops because, you know, when you get edits back, it doesn't mean that you did anything wrong. It just means that we believe in you and that your work can be strengthened and improved. Um, so, um, you know, when it's sent out for review, it's good to be patient. This is really hard, or at least it's really hard for me. <laughs> um, I'm the type to obsessively check um, portals, um, but it can take up to three to four months. Um, it took one of my papers about four or five months um, to get the first round of reviews back. Um, you can have up to three or four, usually it's two or three. Um, and you know, you up and the update will be sent to the portal and to your email. So you should know right away. Um, the notification of decision email, dun, dun, dun. It, uh, it always, uh, it makes you excited and nervous at the same time. So again, this is like Chanel said, major versus minor revisions, reviewer comments. So this is some examples of reviewer comments that I've gotten before. And this is just one reviewer. So 16 points from one, or I think there are even more from this reviewer. So how you do this is you go through step-by-step step and answer each, um, each reviewer's comments very specifically. Um, so that's very important to do because the reviewer wants to know that you really thought about what they had to say and you really want to make the work the best it can be but this can be very tedious and very um hard to do at times so yes internally screaming it happens it's very hard um especially if you have three reviewers and they all give you like 16 comments but you'll work through it and you'll get the help of your pi and whoever else is on your team 
Um, some helpful tips. Um, it's really good to have, I call it an ORCID or an ORC ID. Um, basically set one up now. Um, it will connect all of your research together. So whenever you publish, it will automatically come on under your profile and your name, which is great. Um, divide and conquer. So always, you know, assign if you can your first author or corresponding author, or if there is one on your team and you're not them, basically divide up the work and it will get done easier. Um, be very sure to directly acknowledge and answer every point that the reviewer makes, like I said before. So this is an example of um, something that we did in our neuroimage paper. Um, if you disagree, that's fine. There's always disagreements in science, especially if a scientist is trying to push something that you may not agree with in terms of theory, explain why, provide citations, say why you don't necessarily think that this supports your paper, and then be aware of deadlines. So it really depends on the journal in terms of how long you have to do your revisions. I've had up to two months versus three weeks, so it's really um, variable. And then remember this process really isn't easy. It's stressful to do peer reviewed publications, especially with in science um, and in brain science. Um, so it, it's good to take time for self care. Um, all scientists get rejected. I can't even count the number of times I've been rejected at this point. Um, and it's okay to get frustrated, but just don't give up. And there's always resources. And this is a really great segue into the writing center. Uh, because we can help you with this. So this is for Chanel. Yeah, so um, we've, Meg and I have both talked a lot about, you know, your experiments and your science and the reviewers comments on your science. Uh, but, you know, oftentimes people overlook how that's going to affect the writing of your manuscript as well. Um, and so what role does the writing center play? I'm going to go through this really quickly just because I know we're a little over time and I, we really want to talk, we really want to get into the discussion. Um, so we can even skip this blurb. It's just talking about, you know, many parts of the writing center that are useful. But what's important is that we have a writing center here at Brown. Um, you can bring anything to our writing center, science, non-science. Um, you can have an actual draft. You could have no draft at all. Uh, we are really there to help at any point of the, of the writing process, uh, whether that's brainstorming, editing, or final touches. Um, we usually, uh, disclaimer, uh, to say bring about five pages max per session. Um, typically manuscripts are going to be longer than that. Um, so maybe if you highlight a section that you're having trouble with or a section that's had major changes, uh, if it's after the review process, then that's that's the best thing to bring. Um, our hours are here. Uh, we're open. Our hours are actually slightly different this summer. We also have a um, 11 to 2 time slot as well. Um, I think almost every day that we're open. Um, but definitely those are posted online. Uh, there's a QR code there that you can scan that'll bring you right to our writing center um, webpage. And the last thing I will say is try to request an appointment at least a week in advance and the earlier the better because we tend to book up, especially around finals times um, and midterms times. So 